episodes are not necessarily those of Cape Town TV or the producers of XA Live, but solely of the guests featuring on the show. Viewer discretion is advised. XA Live! Hey! <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to another fabulous episode of the best of the best of the best. We give you nothing but the best of content from the hours of 4 to 5 o'clock. I'm your hostess with the most, Luandila, in Tom Yomzuli, but obviously, I never My really know. Mayete! Come on, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We are going okay. high and higher. And we are going high and higher. Okay. And I'm not so tired. The hashtag to use to engage with us today is hashtag Talk Thursday. Yes, sir. You can find us on Twitter, it's XA underscore live on Facebook, it's XA on Cape Town TV. My name is Glamali Moon, welcome to it. Thank you for choosing us. Happy Thursday to you and yours. Yes. Definitely. Come Lam Sala J. Brennan as a bit flicky. Remember, we are here between 7 to 8 in the morning. And of course, if you've missed any episode on YouTube, we're of course on Excel on Cape Town TV. Hashtag Talk Thursday. Yep. Come up on the show. These two incredible human beings next to me sit get to sit down with the incredible <laughs> singer, songwriter, and of course, vocalist Uberita, talking all things about her brand new album. That is, of course, an interview you do not want to miss. And of course, she closed the show off with a great performance. Ooh. Oh, we also have people from Wittelsburg Development Center who are here to speak about all things safety and actually what happens in and around Cape Town, especially when it comes to young people in South Africa. So you don't want to you don't want to miss that. So no, stay tuned. You can also tell us what makes your community unsafe yeah. and how can we make it safer. Yeah. Hop on to Facebook, it's Excel on Cape Town TV or dial us on 021 448 We also have members from Elsa's River, as well as Stelela and LC that they are involved in the Elder Learning forum is in the building yes, so sir. that all that and more is right here on xa follow us on twitter xa underscore live otherwise find us on the world wide web it's capetowntv.org yes, ladies sir. and gentlemen welcome to the, the biggest, biggest the, the baddest, baddest and, and the most hip and happening, happening show in the motherland we're hectic nine million times, times than any other i show. didn't say that thank god <laughs> <laughs> listen we also have emma and mara on the studio gentlemen i feel like guys me and lama are just arguing about who's gonna open and yeah. i took the plunge and i did it thank you so much for tuning into the biggest the baddest the most hip and happening show in the motherland and we're still giving you nothing but the best of entertainment and my darlings have we ever lied no never i don't remember ever lying follow us on twitter it's xa underscore live on facebook it's xa on cape town tv that number to dial is zero two one Four four eight zero four four eight, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes, especially sir. if you are a Berry Bay, oh. we've got something very special for you, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Award-winning yes. artist Tuperita Award is in the building. Oh. Um, on her fourth album, Abanyabantu, they don't make it past one. One, and, and she then she's is on, on her, her fourth, fourth album. Yes. Listen to Not that. Not just going on her fourth album, but actually doing amazing, amazing in all those albums. Yeah. Um, Elkala, um, yeah, Richie Gold, yeah, for many hours, is a million. Yes, I'm um, okay. not exaggerating. We're telling um, the truth. Well, um, she was raised in Zimbabwe. Yes. But came to South Africa. Aren't we lucky? We are very that lucky. That she chose us as a continent. We are so blessed. <laughs> I'm so honored. You guys think you're a continent. Let's fix that now. Oh! I am so embarrassed. <laughs> South Africa, oh in a country, in a in country. A, well, Americans in think a, that. In a <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God, I, I take that back. Verita, welcome to the show. 
Thank it's you. It's ours, it's not yours. So Please do not correct us. Uti, our show, not yours. <laughs> See, there's already drama. Welcome to the show and thank you so Hi much for guys. joining us. Hi, guys. I'm so happy to be here. Um, what are you doing? That's my favorite song of all time. That's Thank how you me. were introduced to the masses and then you went on and on and on and yeah. now to the fourth. What lessons have you learned as a musician? Um, I'm very, very blessed and honored to still be doing what I love. When I first started, I was, I think, 20 or 21. I'm 28 now, so I'm still in my 20s. Oh, you look like you're 20, okay, carry. <laughs> um, Tandoloto was great. It was the way I was introduced to the world. And, you know, every album has a lesson, but also for me, I've always chosen to be positive, right. you know. Um, there's been challenges. Like I remember when I, I was doing my first two albums, I wasn't allowed to say anything in the studio. Fast forward to my fourth album, I'm actually one of the producers in the album. Um, so I've grown as an artist, as a producer, as a songwriter, and as well with my new album, it's under my own company, Asali Music. Oh, that is so amazing to see. I love it when people actually take uh, independence for themselves, because especially in, in, in artists in general, there's a huge range right now that's saying, I don't have parts of this in my music, or I don't have songwriting. That's yeah. a big problem in music. And so what are some of the things that you have learned as a producer, actually making your own music now, you're producing your music, you have a say in what it is that you want the world to hear. What are some of the things that we can say, ah, we can spot yes. your influence in My that? influence. Yeah. With my new album, Songs in the Key of Love, I really needed to be intentional. Okay. So in terms of the sound that I went for from the for the album, um, mm. I'm sure you've heard Jiggy Zindo. So from there we got to a, a very uh, um, guitar and voice driven part of the album, which is inspired by Udato Oliver Mdukudzi. Yes, your fave. Yes, my, my personal fave and my mentor. And then from there, we go to a more upbeat part of the album where I've got features um, like Umoti from Mikasa. Yeah. And then there's this slow, sexy song called Geleza, mm -hmm. featuring Bongani Sex. There's also Umegezela, who I do, Will Galale Guitar, I do a song with him. Mm -hmm. And the song, the album closes on a high note with a song that I feature Amanda Black on called Siatandam. Well, your, your album features us uh, in this note because if I'm craving for a kiss, <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's so good, the corona, I don't advise. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to do what the song says you must do, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, um, an unfair question. Um, uh, that Oliver Mtugizi or Ed Sharon? That's difficult because those two are my favorites. Yeah. Um, even with my album, that's what I told my co-producers. Mm -hmm. I said, um, Babu Oliver, I love African music, African rhythms, and that the music always has a message. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Ed Sheeran, I love that he's always writing about love and feelings. Mm -hmm. And also it's, it's very easy on the ear and melodic. Right. So my idea of the sound of the album was to fuse the two so both, yeah. and to have a strong message about love. Hence the album is called Songs in the Key of Love. Now, what is one takeaway from the album or what you hope mm. when one is listening is going to take away from it? Yes. Yeah. I hope that you find hope, mm -hmm. you believe in love again. Um, first of all, love beginning with yourself mm. and then also loving your friends truly, your partner, the people in your life that bring you joy. Mm. Um, I want this album to carry you through um, to weddings, to Zonkindao. I want this to be an album that gives you meditation and that gives you that hope that love still exists in the purest form. Uh, and I have to ask you, I know I love asking artists this, but it's yeah. really true. What's your favorite song? Like, that's my baby. <laughs> oh, Out of I all the albums, you're like, hey, this is the one that I'm rooting for the most. It's, 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 Ngeli Kiss was one of the first songs I released. Okay. So that has a special place in my heart. Mm. Um, there is two songs fully produced by me in the album, the Kaulele, the opening song, mm. and yours. Those also have a special place in my heart. And Jiggy Zinto as well. Jiggy Zinto surprised me. So that also has a special place. Okay. 
magic um what do you think attributes to the magic because in gomazako u so kalango kalikis and then u chikizindo when you turn on the radio so as a it could take our uh, i'm thinking he is in goma zimbini was visa uh play as if manayo is out of this world so what's the magic when they I, Why I did you, how did you yeah. get those specific ones? It's Give us those. the tricks. Um, for me, I guess what I look at it as is when you do what is called a single, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what I normally do is I write a lot of songs and then I have people that will listen to the songs and say, we think this one is the one okay. 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 so when we listened to the album, for example, um, there's a song called Dance in the Rain. Right. We thought that was going to be the next single, yeah. but Chikizindo, when I, I went to the people I trust for radio, right. because you must understand, radio touches all corners of South Africa, yes. as Lalini, Elokshini, yes. Etaoni, yes. as Dexin, yes. yes. and it, it's a goal and a dream of mine to, to yes. not, yes. as much as my sound might be niche, yes. but I do want everyone to be inspired by this music, and I believe that I create that type of music. Yes. So. Hence, we make sure that there's songs like Chiki Zinto and Delicious that anyone can yeah, enjoy. Yeah. yeah, let's be honest right now because Baninsa Abandu that would like to break away and be independent yeah. and be free. Mm -hmm. um, you took that leap and it's working for you, but yes. as an artist that is still under somebody you know, who, who is independent, yes. um, what challenges should they look forward to? And Yes, well, first to clarify, the question is not really about independence. Mm. You know, whatever you do, you're always going to have partners. Yeah. Just yes. like you guys are here in TV, there's crew at the back, yeah. there's the station, there's always going to be different partners that are helping you carry your job. Yeah. So it's the same thing when you're an artist, a record label, a manager, a promoter, your fans, they are your partners yeah. and children. The only difference comes into the value that you bring. When I first started out, I didn't have the kind of value and leverage that I have now. And also, the f I, I was not in a position where I could financially back myself. Mm. Because really how the music industry works is that whoever pays owns. Oh, yeah. So um, for an upcoming artist, I would say the most important thing is to sound and things are much easier now than when I first started. There's social media. Yeah. Yeah. Build your following there. Yeah. You know, do your own shows so that whoever comes into your life to partner with you in your career, they are mm. Mm. I think back in the day, the idea was that the artist is so Whereas make sure that whether you're going to partner with people and they're going to own a part of the rights of the music or all, or you are in a position to own all the rights of your music, you, it's, you are still the one that will boss. You still have to consent to everything that goes on. And you will find that some people know more than you. You still have to understand the industry. And, and don't be emotional and think that it's just about you, the artist, because mm. yeah. it's, a, so it's a more. bigger ecosystem. You have to have a bigger picture yeah. if you're going to be an artist. Oh, yeah. Before we let you go, thank you so much, yeah. Adam, for sharing. But please let us know where we can consume all of this lovely music. Or, we already are consuming it, though, on the airwaves, but let us know how we <laughs> can download it. Yes, um, Songs in the Key of Love, my new album, is available on Gindao or Apple Music, right. Spotify, Jukes, Deezer, Tidal. You can download the album or stream the album on YouTube as well. Right. Yeah, for Manega. I'm working on a very special show for Cape Town. Ah. So you want to make sure, Bana, you get the music now so that when I come back, yes, you'll be in the front row we singing, singing all the songs. Yes, we, we're going, we're going. Very <laughs> base, everybody. Um, we're not letting you go anytime soon. We are about to get up and dance. Oberita is gonna shut this down. Keep it locked right really here will. on Cape Town TV. Oh man. Welcome back to Bule XA right here on Cape Town TV. We're taking all the up until 5 p.m. Hashtag Talk Thursday. Be sure to go right now on social media, XA School Live on Facebook, XA on Cape Town TV. We're speaking about everything that is under the sun.
community safety. Yes, everything under the sun, including community safety and the health of young people yeah. around us. So do make sure that you let us know, actually, all the stories that you have. Is your community self, do you feel like it's safe or not safe? Please do let us know on our social media pages. How can we help you make your community safe? The hashtag to use is hashtag Talk, talk Thursday. Thursday. And you know that Cardi B was supposed to come to the country, but really? it's Coco Vivi. It <laughs> <coughs> the show. So um, we're going to update you later on the show about what's going to be um, going down your castle light, uh, unlock refreshments, yeah. right? Yeah. I feel like unlocks. Yeah. So I'm going like to unlock Cardi B, but then Jesus put the lock. Yeah. Put the lock in. I feel like the country is going to be in lockdown as well. He's doing my bad thing. The whole country is going to be in lockdown. <laughs> Back to the order of the business. Um, today we're joined by E Adult Learning Forum, which um, engages with e youth about Manisa Nezindo that concerned with e community safety. Mm. And, and this year they're taking e initiatives in Gogwabo because they want to do Indo Come Around e Youth Day. Okay. So joining us in studio, Nepaneli to your corner, who Emma and Omara, who are mentors to the young people in their communities. Welcome to the show and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. I thought, yes, the was, I thought, I thought your pun was going to clap for you. Come on, guys. <laughs> Emma and Mara. Mara, before we talk about anything else, we want to learn about the Adult Learning Forum. What mm. is it about and why does it exist? Yeah. Um, the Adult Learning Forum, we are a group of uh, ex-students, um, student educators, people that work in the adult, learn, um, adult education. Mm. Yes. yes. Let me put it to that way. And we, we are about lobbying, advocating, um, adult learning, mm. which is about lifelong learning. Mm. Um, yeah, that's that's mostly. But we mostly work with the youth. I myself as a, as an educator at the Alsace River CLC, mm. which is in Alsace River, and my colleague Emma. Okay, so I'm an edu educator. I was an educator at an Abit Center, but now I'm working in the development sector, working with communities, um, educating um, non-formal learning in the Wittenberg and surrounding areas. Mm. Well, How important it is that we have programs like this? Because I mean, I, I personally wouldn't think that it exists, but it does exist. So what is the importance of having such, um, such things that are building our communities, or rather building our youth in this country? Empowering. Mm, mm, empowering. Oh, that, that is very important because Education is lifelong, mm. okay? But um, it's been around for quite some time. It was about the night schools. Everybody know about the night schools? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it was formalized. So now we, we teach the youth that hasn't been or couldn't finish their career, mm. their school career um, up till grade 12, mm. which has got to do with dropouts and mm. all of that. And it's actually very sad state of affairs mm. because we sit with a lot of youth yeah. that is not in formal education. So right now we we offer the NQF one for adult for the youth. Right. Prior years that we worked with adults, but because of a lot of things in society, a lot of ills in society that we are sitting with the youth currently. Mm. Oh my god. So you, um, you said now you're working with the youth who couldn't finish um, their school career. Yeah. Let's talk about who is really eligible um, to actually be part of this forum that you guys are currently running. Yeah. Um, Anyone? Which, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, 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 um, can you repeat that question? Who's eligible? Who's, 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 who can come, who can come yeah. in and say, I would like to be part of this? Is someone maybe has a grade 9, has a grade 8. How does it work mm. for one to be part of this? Or so someone um, living in a yeah. certain neighborhood, or do yeah. you take everyone? We in? take everyone. Okay. Yeah. You, you asked me the forum yeah. or the educational the education, side. Yeah. The educational side that is from the age of 16 yeah. up until 90. 90 okay yes. which, which is something amazing because some of the key issues why people drop up drop out of school is not only because they just want to drop out no. yeah. it's because of gangsterism because yeah. of crime in our society so yeah. people chose not to go to school perhaps finances because yeah, people exactly. can no longer afford school yeah. emma mm -hmm. what do they learn when they join the forum yeah 
Okay, when they join the forum, the forum is not a place of learning. The forum is more the e executive, the management of, right. of, of the adult learning yes. field yeah. per se. But when they join a uh, community learning center or community learning college, they will learn various subjects like um, English, mm. com communication, numeracy, um, life orientation, and mathematics. Um, in different uh, centers, there in different community learning centers, there's different learning areas which they learn. And Mara can uh, tell you more about that, what they do at LCS River, for instance. All right, yeah. Okay, we, we have a set curriculum. Uh, I should actually add, we were under basic education, mm -hmm. but now currently for the past five years, we fall under DHET, which is higher education. Mm. Um, the subjects, as Emma mentioned, is the formal. Yeah. vocational and all of that that they are doing mm -hmm. so the, the the idea is to give the student an exit point for the NQF1 and then to fall under the FET colleges mm -hmm. so, okay or they can do the matric which is at night and those classes normally starts in August right. and then they write the matric in May the following year. Okay. Yeah. Depending and luckily for us we've got people from Elsa's River who are going to talk through all of that as well as the Vincent Beck. But let us update you about e Castle Light Unlocks. Um, in light of the um, announcement made by the President Osiri Ramaphosa on the government's strict actions in addressing the COVID-19 outbreak. Africa's biggest premium beer brand, Castle Light, wishes to inform everyone that the 2020 Castle Light unlock schedule for the 12th of June 2020 um, at the Ticket Pro Dome in Johannesburg, South Africa, has been postponed. Mm. I know Luani Luguchi was looking forward to attend this I mean event, I mean but um, the company actually and the event organizers actually released a statement saying they share the disappointment with their fans with their fans during this time yeah. um, however as a brand that cares for its consumers they cannot ignore the growing concern of health and safety as a result of, of um, rapid spread of the coronavirus right here in Zanzi and of course throughout the world it is very important to highlight that the event of this magnitude has multiple moving parts and for this reason the brand is deliberating and will communicate further details around the brand new date um, by the end of March 2020 mm. so it means guys if you have um, bought any tickets, don't worry, they will release the brand new date. It's coming, and also what they did state is that we are currently in discussions with our headline act, Ukadi B, who was locked out, um, <laughs> that, and all other stakeholders, that we should ensure that the Castle Lights Unlocks will take place soon, as soon as it is, as soon as it is safe to host the hip-hop event, the biggest rather hip-hop event, hip event in South Africa. We acknowledge the disappointing news to thousands and thousands of fans, but we are excited to witness Cardi B at our Castle Lights. However, the, the health and consumers of you all at home and everyone around is a priority to Castle Light Unlocks. For more additional news about the Castle Light Unlock, we'll be unlocking it after this quick ad break. See you. We're unlocking, guys. On Why are they Die. Meaning, mm. Babona. <laughs> Meaning what? We are within. <laughs> <laughs> tuned into the biggest, the baddest, the most hip and happening show in the motherland. The hashtag to you is Talk Thursday. Today we are talking everything safety related, so please do go on our social media pages and let us know what it is that we can do to make your, um, your environment a little safer, a little better, and just overall greater in South Africa. And speaking of safety and healthy and everything that we've been discussing on the subject today, we have the incredible people from Elsis River. CLC, welcome guys. Yay. Welcome to the show. Thank Welcome you. to the show. <laughs> <laughs> now they're going to introduce themselves and let us know who they are. So you can start for us. Hi, my name is Bayan Udin and my surname is Curtis and I'm part of my Hi, my name is Lal Squir and I'll show also do the same. <laughs> I'm Ronaldo Peterson. I'm JD Lambert. All right, welcome to the show, guys. And now, first things first, anyone can answer this. I wanted to know if no one's ever heard of Elsa's River CLC, what are you all about? We are a community learning center right. in Elsie's River. So we, we do 
like anything that uh, a school would do, but we provide, it's more like we provide learning opportunities for people that have dropped out and right. that want to finish their schooling, and then that's basically it. Right, and what are some of the key things that you face? Because I mean, the, su the subject for today is safety um, in our community. So what are the things that you think could be better when it comes to safety? Well, I would say is basically to have more visible policing around these areas right. where the community learning centers are. Right. Probably more, a more tighter security as well because there is everywhere there is like gangsterism and st things like that that's going on. So just more visibility of the police and a tighter security to keep us safe. Like that would be the first step into improving our safety, I'd say. Right. And you speak about it is um, a community where you guys do study and it's, it, do, it is late at night. Who are people that are eligible to study when it comes to those later hours? And also, because um, we did mention earlier that some people did drop out and it's for different reasons. Now, most people are probably thinking, oh, you drop out because you don't want to be in school anymore. But sometimes it's finances. Sometimes you just you have a mental health problem. What are some of the key things that play in someone dropping out and how do you get them back to going to school? Well, to start off, uh, a lot of learners drop out because of those things you mentioned right. now, financial, gangsterism, or they're scared to come to school mm. because of the fear of getting robbed or they're getting their things taken off. Mm. Well, so the CLC that we are, the, the LC Community Learning Centre, right. we're there for, for learners that, that must think that, that was, it's like a second chance for, for everyone. Right. So... How can I explain? Um. <laughs> You've been explaining it quite well. <laughs> but as you think, I'm going to pass it over to my co-host, Lamele Moon and Sonala. Do you have any questions for the panel that is sitting with me right now? Yes, um, I would like to find out, um, is there any... Are you also engaged with other CLCs from other communities or you you just a standalone CLC or you, you do have peers from other communities? That makes the CLC community broader. Mm. Yeah. At the moment, yes, we do. Mm -hmm. And for like the program that we're at now, for making the environment more safer so that every one of us can be safe and finish our studies. That's everyone or all the community centers that there are, we work as a group just to fix that the, the situation that we are in. Speaking okay. of safety, how visible is the police in your community? I would say not, not at all. Oh. Mm. Because um, at, on a daily basis at um, the learning center that we attend, the NLC River, there's a lot of robberies and the children get robbed on a daily basis and sometimes you don't even want to go to school because of that, because you feel like you are being targeted by these gangsters. Yeah. I, I, wanna, I have a question for... Um, these two amazing ladies here. I want to talk about safety in our communities. We know safety is a huge problem. Crime is a huge problem. People sometimes grew up without having mentors now in our societies, now in our communities. How important it is to have people like you in our communities who are mentors to young people and making sure that this CLC do not, do not shut down, do not close down. Yes, that is what we strive for in an ideal world. Yeah. And, um, Concerning Elsie's River, on a daily basis, as yeah. the students were saying, on a daily basis, they get targeted, they get robbed, they get beaten. Mm. They, some of these learners, even in, in, in the centers, they belong to gangs. So they would um, say, okay, or victimize that a particular student in, at school. And visibility, we normally, when things happen, we phone the police, they're there just that moment. Yeah. Mm. And then they're gone. Mm. And, and sometimes, I don't know, I can't say this on national TV. Oh, you or, can. No, I can't say <laughs> that. I oh, can't can. say that. But it, to me, it feels that children are, it, it's like, oh, it's just a problem. It's not that big. We leave them. Mm. I think sort it out yourself. I think there's also this stigma towards CLC uh, that certain people should attend it. I feel like if everyone had the spirit of giving back, if the community could see the vital role that CLC has played in our communities, the, the, the locals, if they could see the important role, maybe themselves 
could be um, play the role of being securities, being almost, mm -hmm. I remember in high school with Omas Bambane, where um, the locals could come to the school and play the role of security because we didn't have securities. I feel like if communities can get more involved in this else's maybe it wouldn't be so dependent on the police as well. Yeah, I want to take it back to the panel. Um, are the educators at school supportive when you are facing challenges and what kind of challenges are you facing mm. uh, as Goleni and then you need your educators to be supportive of? Well, as I can say, they, they try to do as much as they can, mm. but you know they can only do so much. Mm. Yeah. So in any situation where they know knowingly that they can help or assist you in anything you're struggling in or so, they would help. But if it's out of their hands, they, will, they would maybe like um, direct you to like a place where you can get the help that you need or in, in those type of areas. Right, right. And I have one more question from anyone. Um, how and why did you join the CLC? So I need, I need one story. Move us. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. So um, the reason why I joined CLC is because the school that I attend, they didn't have, how can I say, I couldn't go there because the problems of my situation at home and whatsoever. So I dropped out of school. Right. And then I found out later mm. out about the CLC. So I went there and I found out what, what did they give us. So they said that they will give you the same subject choices that you got, you got on school. Right. It's just they to help you to improve in your schoolwork and become something that you want to be in life. Right. And that's amazing, the fact that even if you don't get it right the first time, there are places and areas where you can always get it right the second time. Remember, guys, the hashtag to you is Talk Thursday. Make sure you do go on our social media pages and let us know. But right now, we're going to see you after this. <laughs> Thursday afternoon, you can call us on 021 and today is hashtag Talk Thursday. Xander we are on Twitter. We've got the Elsis Weaver CLC, and sitting next to me are the people from E. Witzenberg Rural Development Center. I've got it right. Yes, yes. And we're talking community safety. The young individuals that are here are looking forward to doing incredible things, especially coming forward to e Youth Month. We're talking in community safety because they feel like it's something that is close to their hearts and we're gonna embark on a conversation, all of us at the same time. Do dwell on Facebook, it's Excel like on Cape Town TV. Remember, we're gonna be reading your Facebook um, statements when we return right here on Excel. Yo, I'm Zanti. Say, Baba, speak up. Hello, Africa. My name is Sazmati. Hello, everyone. My name is James Matanke. My name is Zara, the Sheriff Forbes. Catch me every Monday to Wednesday, 4 to 5 p.m. This is Excel. Elegant. Crazy. Stop it. Nothing. Excitement. Every Monday through Friday between 4 and 5 is who we are. What we do is bring you nothing but entertainment information as well as education. I'll let and allow my panel to introduce themselves. Welcome to XM. Thank you for joining us. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> hey, I'm Robin Yankees. I'm from Watsonberg and I'm an intern there by WRDC. Um, good day, good people. Um, it's good to have you here. I'm Angel Diagolo. I'm also from Vatanberg, but in a township called Ndoli, in the Vatanberg. And he said it's good to have me here. So, yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Taryn Peterson. Um, I'm currently a learner from Bella Vasta High School. So. Hello, everyone. I'm Lebowang Jacob Zetzen. I'm actually from Darling, but I come here to Vatanberg and I kind of put an interest in what you're Doing. All right. Hi everyone, I am Karen Johannes. Um, I'm currently living in Biala Vasta, a small town in the Wurzenburg. Yeah, I'll take this question to Emma. Emma, I want to find out how important is it to have E. Wurzenburg Rural Development Center and what does it do in the community? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, um, Vattenberg Rural Development Centre is uh, an organisation. We do advice office work. Um, we are a community advice office. That's part of the work that we do. We also a development organisation. We offer um, early child development uh, work to, to, to young children. Um, that is also part of, as we're celebrating Human Rights Month, it's also a, a right for a young child to be at the right to education. And we do develop to do different development workshops where we uh, train people and learn people about their rights in communities. So that is just a, a little part of the work that we do in Wittenberg. But our key line is that we fight for access to justice. All right. Um, to the panel, I want to find out, since you've got the microphone, since joining this um, organization, how has your life changed? Um, looking at the great work, I, I started joining them in the year 2016, no, 2017. Mm. And they are an organization that uh, provides services. And I, I won't say that they charge money for these services or make profit out of them, but they, it's more, it, they, they develop in the community. They, they, they make developments and... I started joining them when there was um, this burning in, in Dwali, mm. where a lot of sheikhs um, burned, and that is where they started to provide um, food and mattresses to the people, uh, to the victims. Yeah. So yeah, that's when I started joining them, because I saw them doing that as, as a good platform, as a person who wants to become a public representative one day. So that's me. All right, you can yeah. pass the microphone to her. Everybody say, hey! <laughs> um, what important role does the development center play in you and your community? A very important role. Because why I also joined them in 2018, I think. In the first time, I wasn't really interested in it. Yeah. The more I get... The more I hang out with them, I see what type of work they do. They go out to the communities, and sometimes the people from the communities come to them and to ask them for advice. Then mm. they give them advice. Like in the workplace, when one of the workers come to them to ask advice, they, they, they call the work giver to ask what happened. If they, is there something wrong, they um, go to C CCMA yeah. and to handle the, the case. Sure. Why is community safety something that you guys are looking into and you're digging into it? Why is that important? Okay, so um, I'm still in school, but I'm not part of the group. So mm. I think for our safety, I think our, um, us as children, it's, it's, important for, it, it's important for us to be safe. Mm. Because at school, we, when we're in school, um, we can't be unsure about our safety. So when our, when our parents send us to school, they expect us to be safe. To be, mm. to be safe. Uh, yes. So um, I think it's important for us because anything can happen, and then our, our parents expected us to be safe, but things sure. happen, and we're not safe. Yeah. Luas, yeah, Lalo? Amazing. Um, oh, this is an amazing initiative that I, oh, I, 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 I dream of it. I'm spreading throughout the Western Cape and yeah. having more um, forums, maybe having more organizations, yeah. um, like this, where young people are involved. Why is it so important to involve as many, many young people as you can in such developments mm. in our areas? Okay, so as the saying goes that the young people are the future yeah. of, of, of South Africa or the future of tomorrow. So I would say it is uh, very pivotal or very important to have such development and such organizations in, in our areas. Um, like. So the, that Vatsenberg Rural Development Center belongs to the community advice offices of South Africa. So there's a number of community yeah. advice offices in the Western Cape per se and in South Africa. We are represented in the nine provinces of South Africa. Mm. Yeah. So um, like our, ex our, our services are free of charge. So they, we do play an important role because many times the departments and the st uh, key stakeholders can't access or can't help people. So I think that people in yeah. specifically yeah. rural areas need these kind of organizations like uh, Vattenberg Rural Development And we Center. absolutely yeah, agree. Yeah, yeah, we, love, we love what you're doing and thank you so much for doing what you do. And hopefully more people in and around Cape Town will be influenced by this amazing thing. So don't forget to go on our social media pages. Let us know if you've learned anything new. It is Xander School Live on Twitter as well as XA and Cape Town TV on Facebook as well as XA and School CTV on Instagram. But right now, we'll check you on the flip side.
Islam is just. <laughs> I will read the translating. Yeah, I think so. I was singing the same song. Really? Are we? Yeah. Remember on Facebook we asked you how safe is your community? Jackie says, I live in Stellenbosch. To be honest, I don't think the word safe exists in our communities. Michelle says, Elsa's River, not safe at all. You can break down a house here or beam they will find out who pimped and put you in a hit list. To be honest, I'm out of ideas because when a leader dies, there's a new gang leader, they raise him from a young age already. Baron says more positive community programs of um, encouragement because it is those who are dwelling during the day and night that cause these crimes or perhaps it is the order and demand that specific societies must follow. Bradford would say, I lived in Oxford for about 10 to 12 years. In that time, my parents moved from Mitchell's Plain to Delft. Life here is hectic, and I don't even want to walk around here. You cannot tell the youth from the adults because they are the same around here. Theodore Theo says, just stay indoors. But we, as Elsa's River, um, can I see the rest? Um, we are not afraid to die. Ooh, I am afraid to die. <laughs> Uh, Tabi says, okay, it goes on to say, I used to be a camera operator for Cape Town TV, and if you can give me the opportunity to do a documentary out here, believe me, I will work around the clock to get the project up and running. Just need your help, that's all. Yeah. Yes. Remember, you can communicate with us, we excel on Cape Town TV, on Facebook, on Twitter, it's XL underscore live. On Instagram, we are XA underscore CTV. We're also available on YouTube. It's XA on Cape Town TV. Otherwise, catch us tomorrow morning between 7 and 8. We bring you the repeat every day between 4 and 5. We bring you the biggest, the, the best, baddest, and, and the, the most, most hip and having show in, in the motherland. Yeah. God bless you, man. We're still talking all things saved in health in our communities. I just want to find out. Someone just had an incredible, incredible comment that even if you tell who... Um, are, they, um, are the gang leaders who does the crime in the old community? They will, they will find out who one. they will find out who you are. Exactly. Then they will punish you. So people rather sit with, with incredible information from the police and not say anything. Do you think the civil society, the communities, are playing uh, and, and, and are, are playing a good role in changing the communities in making sure that everyone in the communities is safe? Um, I would say. That Be honest about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, I would say no, people are scared, really. Um, like, I'm from a small community, Wittenberg, and I'm from Bella Vista. Like, we face the same issue. Yeah. And if I, like, we know who the gangsters are. We know, and, and in our area, it's most, most of them, the leaders, they are young. Mm. And I would not, I'm honest, I would not tell who did what yeah. because yeah. I'm afraid of my life. Yeah. Although the although we are celebrating Human Rights Month this month on Saturday, it's Human Rights Day, and every person have, have the right to life. Mm. But I think when it comes to that, um, you will use your right to life and not say nothing at all. Mm. So I think communities um, out there, we are they are they are scared. Right. We are community uh, civil society organisations that um, young people like there is the Pontieval a walking bus that is a support um, youngsters going to school. So there is a number of communities in in the Western Cape and in South Africa that do support and do want to help um, people and young people. That is a very huge problem. Yeah, that yeah. is a huge problem. Very huge problem. Because I mean, if you think about it, you do care about your life. But, but and then yeah. if you think of, and also you are telling people, okay, this gangster that the gangster might be taken down, yes, but another gangster will be raised. So did, did you make a difference? and you you got killed for your life didn't change yeah, other gangsters that yeah. come about so how is how 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 can we actually as a community better if we're not giving if we're not um giving out names of gangsters what can we do is this the only thing that we can do where we can actually bring other youngsters and, and help them study 
where do we go from here? I think the panel can. Yeah, can are you, <clears throat> how close are you to the police? The gentleman yeah. with the uh, yellow there? Yes, um, you, can, you can answer. Are you, um, Iforam Yanu, are you involved with the police? Are you able to be there, um, speak to them, and say, this is what's happening? Yeah. If we communicate community here to please come and assist how close what's your relationship with the police in your community um i would say we're not i'm not so far away from them but then it's just that you know that kind of fear that you guys were talking about mm. Mm. like to go and report something even though you know it's wrong you know you saw who did it but you just scared when you fear for your own life so basically, it's just one of those things. Yeah. And gender-based violence, I'll speak to you because you are a lady. Because um, 2019, there was a scourge of e gender based violence. Women have been killed. Children are being abused. We started 2019 with but another 2020 as yeah. well. People being um, abused and killed. e gender based violence in your community, how does it fare? I think um, it's almost like that. But where I love... People get killed and things happen, but um, when we we're not so close to the police, mm. as he said, because um, when we go there, they tell they tell us um, to define who did it, but then we are scared because um, when those when those people we are not just, we're not um, secure, mm. and and for instance when they, when we tell them, yeah. they'll also ask us who did it and when those people find out who told them yeah. then it's all it's almost like okay i'm done and i i'm scared to love because what will those um, people do to me yeah. and when we go to the police now um so we we won't go there because we're not we're not able to so tell it's, them. it's like a hopeless situation. Yeah. If the police cannot assist you, who can? But and in South Africa, police yeah, yeah. are useless. But if it's not, it's not about being useless. Even the, even the justice system is so useless, it does not protect it doesn't. Um, the, 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 the weaknesses. Because it now doesn't. we're going to have to stand um, in, in, in court and that person sees you and you have to say all these things and about them. next week what you're going to die. What if they get a bail and then yeah. next week they come back from Mara, you? Emma, how um, other young people that are watching right now and they are impressed with the panel, they want to join the organization what do they do the organization or the school the, the adult learning both. Both. Yes. Both. Both. both um we in alcis river the school is in alcis river uh, polar street the adult learning forum we have our website and we have our facebook account and we have a twitter account they can just with membership mm. they can join us in that form no. and, and emma when emma? they want to join the Vitzenberg? Okay, so we're also accessible on um, Facebook, uh, Vitzenberg Rural Development Center. Mm -hmm. And then we're in, so located in our main town. We're in, in Fort Taker Road, number mm -hmm. one. Um, our building is situated in the, our office is in, uh, situated in the Jumbo building, right. at one to one. So we're opposite uh, a landmark called the Traffic Department. Right. So that's where you can find us. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming through and giving us this talk. A lot of people from home learned a lot. And Thank you guys for give yourself a round of applause. Wendila, I think we're ready to dance. I ready think to we dance are or ready dance. To dance? And my darling, the next performer did make me and Lama dance nice. quite a lot. She goes on the name of the incredible, the amazing Verita, displaying one of her new songs, Zachiga. Is in da. Zachiga is in Here is Verita, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye, yeah. Salam. Up next yeah. is Open Studio. <laughs> Shoot, 
Sugar, sugar, my sweet love. Oh. 